QuickBooks Desktop 2023 Reports Overview. Let's do it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop Sample Rock Castle Construction Practice File provided by QuickBooks. Going through the setup process we do every time, maximizing the home page to the gray area, going to the view drop down, noting that we have the hide icon bar and open windows list checked off, open windows on the left hand side. Going to the reports drop down, company and financial, looking at that PL profit and loss, otherwise known as the income statement. Date change 010124 123124, January to December. Customize it, fonts and numbers, change it to 12. Okay, yes, okay. And then we're going to go to the reports drop down again. Company and financial, this time the big balance sheet. Tab date 123124. Customize the report. Fonts and numbers. Change it. 12. Okay. Yes. Okay. That's the setup process that we have been doing every time. Note that we're going to go through many of the other reports to give an overview of the report center. When we look at all the different kinds of reports in there, it can be quite overwhelming. However, it'll be a lot easier to consider if you realize that the two major reports, the financial statement reports, are the balance sheet and the income statement, otherwise known as the profit and loss report. You mean, I wouldn't even really think about them as reports. I would think about them as a level up from the reports, the end result that we're primarily thinking of, meaning they are the financial statements. They are the financial statement reports. Every other report, pretty much just about every other report, is going to be giving more detail, expanding upon in some way, organizing a little bit different than simply a general ledger, some line item or multiple line items of the major two reports, the balance sheet and the income statement. Or in other words, the reports are typically constructed, these two reports are constructed from the accounts on the general ledger. If there's any activity in the accounts that we have created from the general ledger, the list of all accounts, then again, they will be constructing the end result showing up somewhere in the balance sheet or the income statement. Also just realize that the trial balance is another report that kind of has everything involved in it because it's in essence, the balance sheet on top of the income statement. Keeping that in mind, when we're thinking about other reports, how to get to other reports, there's two primary ways we can do that. We can go to the reports drop down, and then we can go to the report center up top. So if I go into the report center, it has this little organization. I'm going to maximize it for some reason. It unmaximizes when I go into it originally. So I'm just going to go, okay, maximize that. That's one way we can get there. Notice the tabs on the left hand side are the major categories on the left and we're currently in the standard tab up top. The other way to get there is what we've been doing every time when we go into the reports, probably the fastest way to get to the reports if you haven't like customized or put reports in some kind of custom field, and that would be to go down here and then go to the report. So these categories here, company, financial, customers and receivables, sales match these categories over here. And then you've got the added drop down with all these reports in it. This can look a little bit overwhelming. So if you know where you're going, this is the fastest way to get there. If you don't know where you're going and you're searching for some new report, then opening the report center is probably the best way to go there. If you have some reports that are kind of buried when you look at this drop down and you want to make them a little bit more accessible, you can memorize the reports and you can put reports here 
these are also reports that you can you can make you know more uh, customized basically reports up top we'll talk about more shortly you can also put reports in like favorites in your drop down here to make them a little bit more accessible if you need so for now we're going to go into the report center so reports drop down report center this is the report center we've got tabs up top the standard tab is the main tab we'll be looking at the memorized tab represents reports that we have memorized so these might be reports that are going to be really useful to us so we memorize them or they might be reports that we have changed and that's probably the the better use of this field in other words for example if we have like a balance sheet and an income statement let's open up a balance sheet and we want to change the formatting let's say we want to take the pennies out of it let's do i'll show you real quick if i go to customize up top and we said okay what if i go to the fonts and numbers and i don't want to have any i'm going to have parentheses and red for the for the negative numbers and i don't want to have any pennies involved in it and i'm going to say okay and you note that i made it 12. well now if i want to save those settings then i can memorize this report therefore i will not have to do that change every time every time we open the report as we have been doing every time i change the font so that can be a a useful tool we'll talk more about that in the future back to the report center toggling on the left hand side memorized reports and you've got different categories for the reports we'll talk more about how you can organize those categories or give some suggestions in future presentations we've got the favorites so this is where you can put put items that are your favorite items to get to them a little bit more quickly so for example if i went over to the standard tab Note that it's usually pretty easy to get to the balance sheet and the income statement. So that's probably not, you might want, you know, probably be something that's a report that you use a lot that, that's a little bit more difficult to get to. So maybe if you had a report down here and I said, I want to put this in my favorites with a little heart here, put it into the favorites. Then you can go into the faves and this will be a little bit quicker possibly to get there. And then when you go to the reports drop down up top, you've got your, your favorites. And so that, that'll make it a little bit more customizable. That's a way to customize it. And then you've got the recents. So sometimes this gives you your recent reports that you had open. And then you've got your contributed. These are reports that other people have opened that they have customized them. And so you could look for some, some standard customized reports that other people have found to be convenient that might be useful to you as well. We'll talk more about customizing reports in a future presentation back to the standard tab so within the standard tab once we see the reports in this middle window we can view them a couple different ways this is probably the easiest way to view them because you get a nice glance at what is happening here but sometimes if you just want to look at a list of the reports you can go this way that gives you a nice list to me if i know the list and i know what the report looks like i'll probably just find it this way with the reports drop down and then see the list this is basically a list format this way so that's why i usually like to see it a little bit this way if i'm actually going to go into the report center or possibly if i want to get a little bit more detail use this method which will give them give you a little bit faster look and you can sort through them this way and so you can see what the report looks like and that's probably why you're going to be in the report center anyways as opposed to going through the drop down because you don't know exactly what you're looking for and you maybe want to be observing what it looks like i'm going to go back to the default which is the grid view and then we'll just kind of go through some of the categories of the reports in in each of these categories so first we have the profit and loss report so this is the company financial remember this is the major financial statement uh, report of the income statement the timing report income minus expenses the standard report is probably one of the most common reports you're going to use although you might customize it a bit for your personal use or for the use uh, externally so that's the one we've been working with that's the one we've been taking a look at so you could have the profit and loss details so this is going to be the profit and loss but giving you a bit more activity in it notice it has the type the date the name and so on you got the profit and loss year to date comparison note that many of these other profit and losses reports such as the year to date comparison are reports that we can customize from the original profit and loss in other words if i go to the profit and loss and i customize the report i have some options to do a comparison to a prior month comparison prior year comparison 
many of the reports that are in the report center, if I go back to the report center, are constructed from the options. So you could, you could have made them in essence from a profit and loss. So these are great default options, but we'll also talk about how to make some of those standard comparison reports, side by side comparison, month to month, year to year, month to prior month and that kind of stuff. So profit and loss, a previous year comparison. So this is another comparative P&L report that we could construct ourselves if we know how to do that. Profit and loss by job, which would be specific to, to job cost system. Profit and loss by class, if you have class tracking turned on, which is a specialty kind of area. We have you know a whole course is on if you want to look into that more detail. Profit and loss unclassified. Then we have the income and expenses. Income and expenses basically being reports that are kind of P&L profit and loss reports because income and expense are income statement reports. So you got income by customer. Notice that this is giving you a more, more detail on the profit and loss. So if I look at the profit and loss, usually you have the income by account grouping, account category. Now you're going to take that income and give more detail to it by breaking it out by customer. That's why on the income statement, we typically don't break out different income line items by different customers because we can make another report to give us that. We have another one giving us more detail on the income accounts, breaking it out uh, income by customer detail, giving us more detail on the customers. Then we got expenses by vendor summary. So now we're getting more information about line items on the income statement, usually broken out on the income statement by the account that we grouped them, them, what we used them for, this then breaking them out by the vendor who we paid. So we get more detail about that. So that's why many of the other reports are gonna give us more detail about a line item or multiple line items on the major financials, balance sheet, income statement, expenses by vendor detail. We've got some graphs that they give us here as well. We'll look into in future presentations. And then we're on the balance sheet, the other main report, balance sheet standard, the one we open up all the time. We got the balance sheet detail, giving us a little bit more detail as we saw with the income statement balance sheet summary. This one's a little bit more compact. So if you were to present this to somebody else, this report is quite useful because it's it's a little less intimidating. But oftentimes we use the standard balance sheet as we're working within the system because that gives us all the accounts, whereas this is going to group some of the accounts together by, in essence, the, the type of accounts that we saw when we looked at the general ledger. Then we got the balance sheet a prior year comparison. This is a report which once again we can construct from the balance sheet if we know how to do it. They just put one together for us already. We'll talk about how to do that in future presentation. Net worth graph type of report. Then we've got the cash flow. The cash flow is the other major financial statement report. So you might be asking about that. You might be saying, why haven't you talked about the cash flow? Because the cash flow, although it's one of the three major financial statement reports, it's not really the first two that we construct. We construct the balance sheet and the income statement typically, if you were to make these from scratch. And then we use those reports to make the cash flow report. Why? Because the balance sheet and income statement traditionally will be on an accrual basis method. However, we'd still like to see cash flow. So you might say, well, why don't I make another income statement on a cash flow basis, for example, or profit and loss? And so that's in essence kind of partially what we do with the statement of cash flows. So now we're trying to get the best of both worlds, have an accrual based financial statement, balance sheet, income statement, and then have a cash flow based statement, the statement of cash flows. But in essence, it's given you a more detail on the accounting system on a cash flow basis. And you can think of it as kind of breaking out the flow of the cash in, in that in that way. It follows our theme that it's going to be a report related to, you know, another report. It's going to tie into our cash flow uh, report on, on our cash on the balance sheet in essence. And so then, so those are going to be the major reports here. Let's go to the customers and receivables. These reports are going to tie out then or give more detail about the major balance sheet account of accounts receivable, which is us showing people owing us money. So if I go to the, to the reports, then we've got, we've got the AR aging. So that breaks out then the people that owe us money and then how over past due the the balances are which helps us to collect on them of course the ar aging detail they've got graphs for ar aging open invoices the open invoices typically are the things that create the accounts receivable so those are the forms 
by customer that if they have not been cleared, that's what the accounts receivable balances is, is, is made of. Then you got the collections reports, which of course the accounts receivable, we're trying to collect on it. Average days to pay summary. So that's trying to determine how much time it takes on average for us to get collection from the receivable, from the invoice time to the collection time. And then we got the average, average days to pay calculation. You got the customer balances. So this basically breaks down the accounts receivable by customer, which we can also see in the vendor in the customer center customer balance detail, basically in the customer center, same kind of information there, unbillable costs, and then the transaction uh, list by customer. A lot of this stuff, like I say, you could see in the customer center. So if you're trying to figure this stuff, I can see the drop down and look at the open balances and try to search that way if I'm looking for a particular customer. That's why the major report that we use that's not in like the customer center would be the aging detail oftentimes when we're working in an accounting system. On the sales side of things, now this is gonna be supporting reports to the major income statement line item of income. They're gonna give us different information about the income lines generally. You got sales by customer. So now you've got the sales broken out by who bought the, who bought the stuff. So we're just breaking it out in a different way, getting us different information, more detailed information that is on the income statement for income or revenue. Sales by customer detail, sales by ship to address where it actually went to, pending sales, and then you got a graph for sales. Then you got the sales by items. Items are what we did in order to generate the revenue, goods and services that we sell. So on the income statement, we've got the income broken out by account. And then we can also run other reports by who we sold to and what we sold or the services that we sold. In order to do that, of course, you would have to be using the full service accounting system or using the invoices and the sales receipts. If you're depositing directly into the system with like a, with like a deposit form, possibly using bank feeds and assigning that to an income account, then you lose some of the added report features to break out by item and possibly by customer in that way. So then you got the sales by rep. If you have sales rep, then you've got that report. You got the job time reports. Now these are gonna be specific to a job cost system. So I'm not gonna go into these in detail, but if you have a, a job cost system, you've got job related reports and job estimate uh, reports and then time as well. More reports there, vendors and payables. So this is gonna be supporting the balance sheet line item of accounts payable in a similar way as we saw with the accounts receivable, accounts payable representing money that we owe to other people for goods and services provided to us. We can break that out by the aging report. That breaks it out by customer and how old they are. This is the most common report used. Aging detail, we have a graph. Then we've got the vendor balances. Like with the receivables, this is a useful report, but most of the stuff we can find by going to the vendor center. And then I can search, you know, my outstanding balances in the vendor center here. And we oftentimes would go there in practice. And therefore these reports, although useful common way to break it out, the common subsidiary report, breaking out the payable by who we owe, we'll probably find that in the vendor center. And therefore this is the most common report we use, the AP aging. And so then we've got the unpaid bills. Bills are gonna be the items that are used to create the accounts payable. If they have not been paid, that's the increase the payable. Transaction list by vendor. Then we've got purchases. Now this is gonna be in place if we have inventory oftentimes. So we got purchase by vendor summary. So we're breaking out the purchases we made by who we purchased from. Purchase by vendor detail. And then we've got the purchase by item. So these are showing the purchases by the thing that we purchased, like the inventory items, for example. And then we've got the open purchase orders. So this is something that oftentimes, again, we probably would be looking at by going to, in practice, we would be going to the vendor center and possibly looking at the purchase orders here or going to the transaction purchase orders and looking at open purchase orders here. So these reports, although useful, probably not the main place we go to when we're trying to find an open purchase order in, in the process of our accounting and bookkeeping. 
the inventory this of course would only be applicable if we have inventory the main report being the inventory valuation summary this giving us more detail to the balance sheet account of inventory inventory having one line item giving us the dollar amount of all the inventory if we have a perpetual inventory system tracking the units of inventory then we got the inventory valuation the inventory valuation detail inventory stock status which can help us to count the inventory comparing our physical count to what the quickbooks says then we've got the employee reports noting that the payroll reports are a whole animal in and of themselves because we have all these other kind of laws and regulations for human resources withholdings and whatnot also remember that you have to turn on payroll in order to have the payroll reports you typically have an add-on feature to be processing payroll although there is a manual payroll that we can use to practice with and so we'll we'll look at those reports later these tie into multiple items on the balance sheet related to payroll so they're going to help us to determine you know payroll checks and whatnot but we've got the payroll liability accounts on the balance sheet and we've got on the income statement the the gross wages and the payroll taxes and the food of taxes and the suit of taxes and so on but again they quote these go a little bit beyond just uh, giving us more detail from a line item on the balance sheet and income statement because they also have to be used to give the pay stubs to the payroll each time and to give the reporting forms to the 941s the 940 and the w2s and w3s at the end of the year this is also the area where you might have someone outside doing that like an adp or paychecks where they take care of all that stuff and you just enter the data necessary to make the financial statements correct we'll talk more about that in the future you got the banking reports so deposit details now this is of course going to give us more information on the balance sheet account of the bank accounts and notice that you could go into the bank account report and look at the detail of one two four and then you could sort this information by type so the major increases being the deposits the major decreases being checks although there's other kind of checks liability checks bill checks and so on so this has given you some 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 reports here that are the deposit detail check detail so you can kind of you can kind of come up to a similar report by filtering into basically a general ledger or transaction detail report missing checks so you got the reconciliation discrepancies uh, previous reconciliations the reconciliation report is a little bit different than other reports because that report isn't really giving us information on the data input to sort the data input for example like with the accounts receivable which sorts by transaction and then having a subsidiary report sorting it by customer with the bank reconciliation we're reconciling our account on the books to the bank's books so we're reconciling to some other thing outside of our system so it's a bit different of a report we'll talk about it more uh, when we get to the bank reconciliation components and then we've got the accountant reports we looked at the trial balance that's basically the balance sheet on top of the income statement very useful report we will start to use that and look at it in replace of the balance sheet of the income statement when we're trying to look at quick activity as we do the data input and see the impact on the financial statements balance sheet income statement the general ledger report is basically all of the accounts and the activity within it and that's similar to if I go to the balance sheet and whenever we double click on a particular account and then say 010124, it shows me the activity. It calls it a transaction by account. So if I had all the accounts and all the activity, that would basically be the general ledger. So this is kind of a similar thing as the general ledger report. The transaction detail by account. So similar kind of process there. These are similar reports. The journal report breaks out all the transaction by journal entry so it gives you the debits and credits it's a really good tool to kind of look at what's happening in terms of debits and credits given the fact that intuit generally uh, doesn't show debits and credits all the time it's kind of like that's the behind the scenes thing so if you're trying to learn in terms of debits and credits then these are a good tool to use it's also good for billing purposes we'll try to point that out a bit as we go through the process depending on your billing system audit trail report report 
voided delete transaction summary so you can take a look at all the transactions that have been removed that could be useful if someone went in there and deleted stuff that shouldn't voided deleted detail transaction list by date so this just lists out all the transaction by date it's a little bit cleaner a little bit smaller than the journal report similar kind of thing however also could be useful for like billing depending on your circumstances and for reviewing we'll talk more about it later in the second half of the course Account listing just gives you a list of the, of the accounts, chart of accounts in essence. Fixed asset list if you have the fixed asset list. Income tax, income tax uh, preparation, income tax summary. So this comes into play if you, if you coded some of your accounts in terms of a tax account, which can be useful, but it ha it's like it has potential, but it hasn't really added a lot of value that I see because it can't be perfectly used. But we might look at that a little bit more when we, when we add the accounts but I've, I haven't found it that a lot of bookkeepers use like the tax components of it. So I won't go into that in detail here. Budgets, budgets are a little bit different than most of the other reports because most other reports in accounting in general is designed to record past tr financial transactions in order to construct the balance sheet and the income statement representing a summary of what has happened in the past and where we stand at this point in time. Budgets are going to use that past data to project out into the future. So they're not something that a bookkeeper can really do on their own independent from the owner of the business because they only have part of the data. They got the prior year data, but they're also going to need projections into the future to create a budget. So we'll get into budgets in future presentations. Just remember as a bookkeeper by default, you're not really the person that's going to put together the budget. You can try to think about that. You have to work with the owner to kind of think about other things other than simply past data to project out into the future. And then we've got the lists with like the customer phone list, customer contact list, the vendor list, phone list, contact list. And this is more detailed reports, contact reports, other names, phone lists, and then the accounting list, the item price list, uh, item lists, and so on and so forth. So I won't go into those in detail. Those are the general outline. Just remember the main two reports, balance sheet, income statement, or profit and loss. And then all the other reports generally make more sense as they are typically expanding on giving more data about some line item or multiple line items of the main two reports, balance sheet, income statement, or profit and loss.